You know, just the other day, I met a lovely bearded fellow who had this amazing ability of telling compelling stories that helped businesses sell more. He was funny, he was engaging, he was kind, and he joins us today to explain exactly how he does it and how us business owners can do it too. And don't worry, we all live happily ever after. Well, I said, welcome to a small business marketing show where successful small business owners share their souls to take your marketing straight to the lead. Now, here's your host, Mr. Tim Bowie. And welcome back, listeners, to another episode of Australia's number one marketing show. I'm your host, Timbo Reed. You, so much more importantly, you're a motivated business owner. Yeah. And you are ready to crank out some great marketing. So you sort of come to the right place, I've got to tell you, because that's all we do around here. We give you the tools, the tips and the tricks to great create great marketing so you can generate more inquiry. Big show today. Sean Callahan, he is the storyteller that I was referring to up front. In fact, he's one of the world's leading business storytellers. I've got a listener who asks me what books to read, so I share you a bit of a top five list, and I've got a motivational quote about, <laughs> yeah, about the upside of wasting time. Gotta love that. Hey, uh, today's episode, lovingly, and I mean lovingly, brought to you by the good folk at Net Registry who care about one thing, and that's about getting your business sorted online, right? It's a bit of a trick, that whole online thing, so hand the challenge over to the guys at Net Registry. They've got some great listener packages just for you over at netregistry.com.au forward slash Timbo, and we're made possible by Audible, who have got more than 180,000 audiobooks ready for immediate download, and you can get a free one. Yep a free one just for you right now at audibletrial.com forward slash SBBM. As per usual, team, there is marketing G-O-L-D dripping from the ceiling over here at Small Business Big Marketing's HQ. So let's get stuck right in. Do you need a speaker for your next conference? Recommend Timbo to your event organiser. Or better still, book him. Tim Reed. That's R-E-I-D dot com dot A-U. Hey, Tim. It's Robert Gerrish here from Flying Solo. This is just a quick call. I've got to tell you, the boomerang effect, what a cracking read that is. Love all the case histories. Thought it was so practical. It was even entertaining, which is you know hard to believe it's come from you, really. But uh, no, it's a cracker, mate. Well done. Take the rest of the year off. See you later, buddy. Bye. Oh, Robert, you are a lovely fellow. And I've got to say, mate, a great voice voice for radio. <laughs> and a bit like myself, you've got a great head for radio as well. Hey, thank you for that wonderful testimonial. Of course, my book is entertaining. Goodness me, expect nothing less. Uh, but I appreciate it, Robert. Hey, guys, check out flyingsolo.com.au if you haven't. And if you want to grab a copy of The Boomerang Effect, head over to smallbusinessbigmarketing.com. <laughs> Okay, today's guest, Sean Callahan of Anecdote. Now, I met Sean at an event recently. It was a really interesting event, actually. Um, Twelve speakers. They had five minutes each to get an idea across, sort of like TED Talks on steroids, but it was really interesting, and Sean was one of the speakers. Sean owns Anecdote, uh, which works with business owners to help you and I identify and craft stories that better engage with our customers. And as a result, we sell more. Hey, got to love that. We talk a lot about storing, talk a lot about storytelling inside the Small Business Big Marketing Forum. In fact, I put a link to a headline checker or a headline rater inside the forum recently. And one of the things that often feeds back is your headline needs to be more emotional. And uh, that is where story can help so much. So I think you're going to love this interview with Sean and you're going to benefit hugely from it. I started off by asking him, if he were an ice cream, what flavour would he be? I'm an ice cream flavour. I know the first one that just came to mind is uh, is uh, rum and raisin. Ah. And, uh, and I think rum, rum and raisin primarily because... You know, I, I get very 
bored easily, I think. And, you know, you sort of need a kind of variety and a few little surprises along the way. So mm-hmm. um, rum and raisin is probably more my uh, flavour that springs to mind. Tell me about your boredom because I do too. Do you find your do you, do you find that a problem in that you flip between projects within your business and never finish anything? No, I'm actually quite a good finisher, but I do I have multiple things on the go simultaneously. I think that's how I, I deal with my boredom. So, uh, and I also like the fact you know working as a consultant, I get to work in interesting organisations for a small period of time, and then I get out again. Mm. And then I'm off to the next one. So, you know, for example, recently I've been working with real estate agents. I've been working with insurance guys. I've been working with um, uh, people in the wine industry. Yeah, you know, yeah, so, yeah. and each one I get to learn a little bit about their business. It was it's funny, just, you know, I reflect back on my time uh, 10 years in an advertising agency where I think that was, I didn't realize at the time, but I did love going between clients. Whereas when I was the marketing manager at a large travel company, just working on that one bit of business all the time was a little bit more challenging and you had to find ways of keeping it interesting. Yeah. 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 I think so. So Interesting. Fits in, fits in with my personality, I think. Now, Sean, you're a good storyteller. Before we kind of get into some strategies around how small business owners can use story to sell, why is storytelling so important to a business's marketing success? Well, I think probably the most important thing is um, it's more memorable. Um, And today with all the information that's flying around and, you know, all the messages that people are are aiming at our customers, uh, you need to be able to stand out in some way. And it turns out that Stories are about seven times more memorable than facts alone. Wow. Yeah. So it's, um, it, it makes a big difference. And the other thing too is that, you know, our businesses are all about relationships, right? I think the days of the transaction have gone and now it's about making that connection, building rapport really quickly and, and stories do that very nicely. Probably. I mean, you say the days of transaction are gone, but yeah. the, the reality is storytelling has been around forever maybe there was a point in time where we forgot about it in business. Well, I think it was around that time where we got into the whole process improvement and less, you know, make it a lean organisation, which are all important things, but there comes a point where, you know, there's a diminishing return in that that strategy, right? Mm-hmm. And I think we're now seeing uh, that realisation that, you know, it's about customer service and, and the customer experience and, and you know, the connection that you make with them and, and especially in the sales process. I mean, the sales process, you know, regardless of what you're selling, mm. is about quickly answering a couple of questions for your customer. One is around, um, you know, can they do it? You know, they're saying they can do it, but can mm. they really do it? And, you know, you share stories of where you've done it before. And also, do I like this guy? Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, right. You know, that's that's how we, you know, we especially when we're uh, buying services, it's a, it's a very personal uh, experience. So yeah, th- I think that's why it's come back to the to the fore. I certainly, when we started our, our business ten years ago or eleven years ago now, it was kind of fringe the whole story thing. Mm-hmm. Whereas now, we, we you know we get um, requests from all over the world to to do this work. So it's changed enormously. There's something. What was the what was the switch that got flicked? Because again, you know, like it's not as if stories new, but no, no. Um, it has come back into vogue. Certainly, the last few years. And was it, can you can you kind of put your finger on what it was that brought it back into fashion? I, I have a feeling it's got to do with um, things getting more complex and messy. Mm-hmm. And it's you know it's just this multitude of informations out there. You know, people want to do things faster. Uh, all these things are, if you like, colluding for people to say, okay, but how do I get my message to stick? How do I build those relationships? So I think that's part of the reason why. What, it's, what about it's the fact like, that we have the attention span of a gnat? You know, but you know, the funny <laughs> thing is about that, that's true. Yeah, and, yeah. and people say to me in organisations, oh, sh- should we make really short videos or audio because, you know, people don't have much attention span. Hmm. But then on the other hand, I'm listening to podcasts, which are like nice. yours, like yours, you know, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, mm. an hour. Tim Ferriss, I saw his last podcast, two hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what's that, that all about? Yeah, well, that, it, well let's, let's figure that out. What is that all about? Because I hear you. Uh, on one hand, you have, you've got this long-form content. 
on the other hand, see, I don't know. Let me just understand that a bit more. I wonder whether the the longer form content that like I'm producing, Tim Ferriss, lots of podcasters are producing, is more conducive to people when they're at the gym, commuting, um, in the car, you know, taking the dog for a walk, whereas the sales stuff that you're talking about in which story still has a role, that is where people have, you know, the one-minute how-to video or the one-minute FAQ video. I mean, I don't think people are going to sit through a 10-minute uh, no, one I of those. I think it's very contextual, isn't it? Mm. We sort of expect a certain link for certain situations. But, you know, when... You know, for me, just looking at different salespeople and how they sell, you know, I had this wonderful experience actually uh, just recently with my brother. Uh, so my brother's a vice president of sales for a, um, uh, for a wine company, mm-hmm. right? Uh, great job. And last year, he, 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 he works in the US, so a big wine company in the US, and last year he flew me over and said, you know, I'm going to take you for a week for your 50th birthday. So down the coast of California. Nice. And it was, the first, it was the first time I got to see my brother sort of in action in terms of he was selling and doing his, his stick, if you like, mm-hmm. uh, to all these winemakers. And, you know, he was a storyteller. He would just tell one story after the next about, you know, something he done, was happening in the vineyards or a new bottling process or, you know, different wines, different companies were buying. And, um, and I said to him, I said, mate, do you realise, you know, you're sharing stories? And he looked at me and he said, holy smokes, I am, aren't I? I just thought I had a very mild superpower. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Well, yeah. is, is storytelling for, is it a superpower? Definitely. It's a superpower because... Well, hang on, that, that all of a sudden I, the listeners are going, oh, geez, well, here we go. I, yeah. I haven't got that superpower. Is it a learnt superpower? Well... It's a superpower that we all have already. Right. Right. And this is this is the great thing because but we, we only use it mostly in informal situations. There was this great study done by a um, an evolutionary biologist actually, and he sent his PhD students out to listen in on conversations. Hmm. Uh, you know, he took sent them to the bar and he sent them to trains and cafes and all sorts of interesting spots. And they eavesdropped on these conversations, they wrote up essentially what people were talking about. And it turned out that something like 60% of the time people were speaking in informal situations, they spoke about who did what to whom. <laughs> and essentially what they were doing, they were telling stories, you know, one mm. story after the next. They'd say, oh, did you see what Tim did yesterday? You know, and then they'd tell a story about Tim and then someone jump in. This is so natural for us, right? Mm. So 60% of the time we're speaking, we're telling stories. So we do it, right? But... We go into organisations or go back into our workplace and all of a sudden we get all, uh-huh. you know, dot pointy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God, I love this. You know what, what I'm saying? Yeah, I, mate, I sure do because uh, when I'm talking, one of my popular keynotes, which is all around the helpful, is around helpful marketing, I, I say to people like, uh, A, a number of things. One of you have already mentioned, uh, people buy from people. Secondly, be yourself. Don't put on your marketing voice. Oh, yeah. Because this is what happens. People people go from being conversational to, oh, hang on, I've got to write that sales letter or I've got to write that slide deck or I've got to present at this networking event. And all of a sudden, Sean, we allocute all our words and we try to be more formal. That's so true. And I hear people <laughs> say things like, you know, there are three things that I want to focus on here and therefore and because of that and as a result yeah, yeah. And, and, and the audience are just sliding down their seats going, oh, my God, this is so boring. So yeah. does that mean that we need to treat all uh, business interactions where we have the opportunity to convince or convert someone, we need to have the mindset of we're at a barbie with some mates? Well, I think... It, that's one way of thinking about it. I think it's, it, it is, does come back to that conversation approach, right? So it's, it's standing there and sort of just engaging in the conversation, which means listening as much as talking, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I tell you, one of the things I like to get people to think about is how do you elicit a story from someone? Because as soon as you get a, them to tell you a story, again, you're getting closer together. Mm-hmm. It seems like, you know... You know, the shortest distance between two people is a story. Oh, that's nice. Right? And I think that's the, that's the thing that you're trying to do. But, um, yeah, uh, 
it's, it's really interesting. I don't, I'm not advocating that we should turn everything into stories, by the way. It's, mm-hmm. I think if I was to make an estimate on how much should you in your business world be telling stories versus the rest, um, I would say it's a 30-70, 30% stories, 70% the rest. Right. But at the moment there's no, there's zero stories for most people. Well, yeah. and, and, and I think proof of that, I was just sort of in planning this chat with you, uh, the little planning that I do, Sean, by the way, don't tell anyone this, <laughs> um, is that, you know, you only, to prove what you just said, you only have to look at the About Us page of most businesses' websites or, you you know, looking at the blog posts of businesses and they are, they can be incredibly factual. Um, and the ones that, to me, the ones that always stand out are the ones that have a little bit more charm, a little bit more conversation, and more like, hey, that person's talking directly to me. Yeah, and I think to, we have to be very specific here about what we mean by a story. Yeah, good point. Right? And because when people hear stories, especially in business, if I if I stood in, if I was a leader or even a, a you know a small business person talking to a customer, and if I said. Guys, I want to share with you a, sto- a story. I n- nearly always get an audience that roll their eyes and go, oh, my God, here we go. We, just, yeah. we don't have time for that, right? However, if I stood in front of them and said, you know what, something really important happened a couple of days ago I want to share with you, they're all going, so what happened, Sean? Tell me, you know, <laughs> what, what went on? Now, of course, it's a story in both cases, but we don't like the S word. I oh, see. I, you said that the other night when I saw you speak, and I yeah. disagree. I've, okay. I, I yes. really like. I, I get your second option of yes. hey, something happened the other night. Yeah, I've got to tell you. I mean, I'm leaning in a bit more. But geez, you're bloody harsh on the S word. I, I don't mind I someone saying, "Hey, Timbo, got to tell you. Can I share a little story with you? I'm all ears." It's the context again, right? If you're standing one-on-one and, you know, just having a chat and says, I've got a great story I've got to tell you. Yeah, you're all ears. But when there's that power, I'm thinking of an organisational setting, right? You know, you've got a leader standing in front of a group of people. You know, they're all a bit sceptical mm. about this guy anyway. Uh, now he's telling them he's going to tell us a story. Oh, my God, you know. <laughs> but at least he's telling a story and not, not like, um, you know, belting off three deep key points. True, true. <laughs> but you know it's going to be a deathly when he says, I'm going to tell you a funny story. <laughs> well, he's setting himself up then to be, ju- right, to exactly. be judged. <laughs> That's right. But, I, but the thing is, you know, going back to this, this idea of, you know, so what, is, what do we mean by yep. this story stuff yeah. um, is for me you've got to be able to spot stories. You've got to be able to say, yep, that's a story, that's not a story. Right? And the way you do that is you've got to listen out for how stories begin. Now, stories nearly always begin with a time marker, right? So when you hear someone say, Tim, you know, uh, a couple of days ago I had something really interesting. When I hear a couple of days ago, mm-hmm. I go, we're about to hear a story. Or if he says, back in 91 there was this big change. Mm-hmm. Now, again, it's a time marker. There's a, there's a story. Um, it, or it might be a vague one. They might say, oh, you know, a while back I had this really interesting conversation, you know. Again, a while back is the time marker. So... A story is a series of happenings, you know. This happened and this happened and this happened and they nearly always start with a time marker. Mm -hmm. Of course, the archetypal time marker, you know, the one that... Once upon a time. Once upon a time. (laughs) I always say that doesn't do so well in business, I find, you know. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. Don't go there. Bit fairy tale like Bit fairy tale like Hey, so listen, are we going to... I'd love to if we are. Like, are you going to sort of deconstruct a typical story that could be told in a business setting? Yeah, I've got a couple different... I call them patterns, story patterns. Love it. Um, so there's two that I think are really important. One is, for especially for in the selling environment, is what I call a connection story. Right? Mm-hmm. It turns out that we're more influenced by people just like us, right? And, and you know, working with these uh, real estate agents so, that I was working with, actually I was in Chicago doing this work, it was really interesting talking to the very best performers because what they would do when they were listing the house, they would go in and they'd be looking around the house for anything that gave an indication of something that they or they did themselves, right? So in this one particular case, the lady was telling me that uh, she walked into this house and she saw all these African figurines. Mm-hmm. Well, it turns out she, she travels to Africa every year to do some charity work over there. And so the next first thing she says is, um, oh, guys, you like... Uh, 
you, you have some connection with Africa? Um, and I go, yeah, yeah, you know, you know, we we really love it. And she says, oh, I was actually there just six months ago. And then she starts to tell. So she finds common ground. She finds common ground, right? Exactly. And here's the other element of, of sharing the story. Just some small story of your experience is it gives the the buyer an insight into your character, right? And it turns out that we were. We want to know what someone's character is. We want to know that before their credentials. You know, we don't want people just listing out their accolades. We want to hear what type of person they are. Mm -hmm. And this comes through, you know, in the story. I remember uh, visiting, I had to do a a coaching session with a a leader in an organisation. So, you know, I looked her up on LinkedIn and um, I noticed that she had, um, she was originally from South Carolina. Now, turns out I was born in South Carolina. Hmm. Lost the accent along the way. Um, an, so, an Irishman born in South Carolina, now living in Australia. That's the one, yeah. <laughs> so when I walked in the door, I said to this lady, Jacqueline, I said, oh, hi, I see you're from South Carolina. And she said, yeah, you know, I, you know, I just moved out. And I said, I was born there. And she looked at me, you know, with amazement. And then yeah. she said, and this is the beautiful question she asked me. She said, how did you end up here? Uh-huh. And of course, then tell I me, get to, tell me a story. Tell me a story. I get to tell the story, and straight after that, we were connected. You know, it was like we were buddies. So, so there's a big learning here, listeners, which is there are opportunities in the sales process, in when prospects, you know, approach you. The questions they're asking can well be rephrased as "Tell me a story about yourself" or "Tell me, yeah, engage with me," yes. as opposed to dump a whole lot of information on me. So that's interesting. All of a sudden we need to start looking out for those those opportunities to tell stories. That's right. Mm. That's right. So the other the other pattern I think is really useful is a pattern that helps explain why. You know, why should I engage your services? Why should I, you know, sort of, you know, work with your company? Can I just interrupt, Sean? Have, yeah. we, have we finished? Is the connection story finished? Is that the, the whole premise of the connection story about yeah, look, finding common ground? Yeah, well, the connection story has really got two components, and that is it's you're sharing something which gives some insight into who you are mm-hmm. and also uh, something that has some common ground, absolutely. They're, 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 so it doesn't have a, much of a structure per se, mm-hmm. but just you're trying to achieve those two things. Love it. Hey, listeners, I'm chatting with business storyteller Sean Callahan of Anecdote. Before we chat about the next form of storytelling, here's a word from a couple of businesses that want to help grow that beautiful business of yours into the empire it deserves to be. Support for this show comes from NetRegistry, a one-stop shop for getting your online marketing sorted. Verity Ma, their chief marketing officer, recently told me this story of a very happy mechanic. So one of my favourite stories of customers that I heard was a salesperson was talking to a mechanic and he was talking about what sort of email he would like to have and what kind of hosting, whether he wants cloud or cPanel hosting. And the mechanic just said, look, I don't care, build my website, here's my phone number, make my phone ring and send me the bill. And that was the last we heard of him. He didn't provide us content. He didn't provide us any details about his business. We had his contact details. We wrote all the content and we just got his phone ringing and sent him the bell. Net Registry, where happy mechanics go to grow their business online. Visit netregistry.com.au or give them a buzz on 1300 638 734 and tell them Timbo sent you. This episode is also made possible by Audible, who's offering you a free audiobook of your choice and a free 30-day trial membership. Head over to audibletrial.com forward slash SBBM and choose from over 180,000 audiobooks. Gotta love that. Download a title for free right now. Well, well, after the show's finished anyway. Hey, uh, seriously though, it's a wonderful offer. Audibletrial.com forward slash SBBBM and get started today. Now back to master storyteller, Sean Callahan. Righto, Sean, that next form of story, what is it? Well, I call it a clarity story and it has a very simple structure. Um, and the structure is this. So in the past, it was like this, and then something happened, and as a result of that, 
that's why you need this service or this product that I'm, I'm proposing. Mm-hmm. So in the future, it can be like that. So in the past, it was like this. Then something happened. This is what I'm proposing. So the future can be like that. Give us and an example. This very basic structure is, so, so for example, you know, with, with my business, you know, I've got a small business. There's five of us. In the core business, we have this network of partners around the world that deliver our programs. Um, You know, when I'm going into uh, an organisation and they're interested in, say, a a strategy story, I get to know a little bit about their organisation and I sort of say, look, guys, your company in the past was, you know, we started from a small base. You ended up, you grew very quickly over a period of, you know, let's say for 10 years. But, you know, the GFC... And, and the fact that the, you know, the sort of the market bottomed out meant that you actually had to do a bunch of things differently. You know? And as a result of that, to get your people on board, one of the key things you'll need is a strategic story. Now, when we do this right and we put it all together, this is what the future will like. You'll have a situation where everyone in your organisation can tell the story off the top of their head without notes, without PowerPoint slides, mm-hmm. and that way you have the whole group sort of aligned and, and doing activities according to your strategy. So it's just a, a simple uh, structure that you use. Um, mm-hmm. Now, the thing that you have to be very aware of is a, a basic principle in story work, which is you can't beat a story with fact. You can only beat it with a better story. You can't beat a story with, yeah, okay, gotcha. Right? Yep. So, so, for example, if your customer, has, your customers all have stories in their heads about who you are and what you do, you need to be able to address these stories as part of your ability to persuade. You have to, we call them anti-stories. Because well, customers can have negative, but prospects can have negative stories in their head. May, m- maybe about what you do, but more, more likely, because they don't know you just yet, um, the industry. So, for example, what would it Okay, travel. I'll just use travel. Like the negative story. If I'm a travel agent, the negative story in the in the prospect's head is, man, I can just get on the internet and book this. I could go and book my accommodation over on Trivago. I could go and book my flights with Qantas directly. I could do all that. I'm going to save myself a fortune. Yep, that's right. So how do you exactly. counter that with a story if I'm the travel agent? Yeah. So the the first thing is you want to you want to bring out that you understand their story in their head. You know, so I like to start by saying something like, um, look, I know you're thinking that, um, you know, you could probably just do this on the internet and quite, you know, you, you, you think it's just a stepwise approach. Then you have to tell a story about, you know, where maybe it, they, someone tried to do that and it didn't succeed for them, mm. right? And then follow you're up. You're creating with fear, Sean. You are creating fear and doubt. And just a little bit, <laughs> yeah. And then tell a story of where it succeeded incredibly well using your approach. Right, nice. so because fear and doubt doesn't actually help people to make choices because they they're worried about what they're doing, but they don't know what to do and how to do it. You then have to follow it up with a positive story that gives them a concrete example of where you want them to go. Mm-hmm. Right, and so I think that's the, one of the best ways to sort of deal with these anti stories. You've got to get them out in the open first because it's amazing that it's the, the elephant the, in the room. Oh, it's the elephant in the yeah, room. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And so you get it out there, you sort of say, look, I understand where you're coming from. I, you know, I know what you're thinking. Um, and here's a couple of examples. A negative one just to, you know, sort of say, look, you want to avoid that, and a positive one to sort of say, okay, this is where you want to go. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, you have, and this means you have to have, start to build a repertoire of uh, stories that you tell, right? Mm-hmm. And, uh, and to do that, you sort of have to just get into this habit of noticing those stories. It goes back to that spotting stories thing that I was telling you about. You've got to notice these stories. And when you do, you know, these stories just wash past you on a daily basis. You don't even yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well, I think this is very reassuring uh, to any listeners out there. And I've been caught in this trap too, Sean, where, you know, I've gone down the path of exploring you know, various different copywriters and how you how you structure a particular story, whether it be a sales letter or an About Us page or whatever it is, and you can really get caught up in going, you know what, this is way too formulaic, I'm never going to get it, I'll, I'll just go back to dealing in the facts, you know, um, and that that's a pity. Um, so you, you make the point that we have these stories wash over us. If we, if we scratch just below the surface... We've got, a, we've got a mountain of stories, all of us, haven't we? 
Oh, yeah, that's right. They're just all there. And uh, um, But here's the thing. And in terms of oral storytelling, that's my interest, oral storytelling. Um, so sta- uh, do you mean? No notes, no written down stories. So yeah. on the shop floor, at a networking event. Yeah, off the cuff. Um, you know, you need. And, to, and for those stories, it's actually a mistake to write those stories out, right? Because even even when planning them, yeah, even when planning them, right? Mm. I'll tell you how you write them out, but you don't write them out in full. I should say, okay. right? Uh, what you should do is is just record a few dot points. This is the irony of it, right? Uh, the best way to record an oral story is just to have a few dot points because you want to be able to um, you want to be able to tell it off the off the top of your head and improvise. Regard, you know, depending on who you're talking to and mm-hmm. and their interests, and you know, stories have that flexibility. But if you write it out, you start to think you have to tell it that way, mm-hmm. which is a mistake. And and the other thing I'd, I'd mention too is how do you remember these stories? Right? <laughs> you, know, you know, that's the thing. You yeah. go, how do you remember them? Well, I'll tell you, this is this, this is the simplest way to remember these mm-hmm. stories, right? And this requires no technology or notes or anything. When you come across a story that you like. You need to then uh, find someone you can t- sort of have a conversation about the story. You tell that person the story. So, you know, I might, might ring you up, Tim, and sort mm-hmm. of say, Tim, I've got this great story for you. Tell the story. And then I just ask you, so what do you reckon that story's about? And you might sort of say, Sean, that's, a, that's persistence, man. That's so about persistence, the importance of persistence. And, uh, and I might sort of say, yeah, it's also sort of like about how small things make a big difference, right? Mm-hmm. That's, that's what it's about too. And, and what we're doing is we're kind of, for the person who's trying to remember the story, they're embedding the meaning of the story and like, kind of like tagging it, right? Mm. And then what happens, uh, and then, then, by the way, you just have to tell the story about three times. And I find once you've told the story three times, it's locked. Yeah, Absolutely I love locked. it. I love that. I mean, here, here's a game that all business owners could play, which is to identify... Three stories. Let's 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 get really specific here, Sean. One yep. story about um, why the business exists. Another story about their leading product or service. And I'm going to make this up. Help me here, but I'm going to say another story about why they do what they do. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, uh, then identify a story for each of those three. Find a colleague, a friend to do the same, another business owner to do, to do the same, and then go one for one in telling the story. Yeah, that's a great idea. Love it. And, and, and make sure they have that conversation about what the story means because you find yeah. that once you work out what the story means to you, you tell it in a slightly different way, mm-hmm. you know, because then you emphasise the most important bits and all the other bits just sort of disappear off the sides. Yeah. Makes for a much stronger story. But here's... Here's the one tip I'll give you in terms of how do you make your stories better, right? And that is moments. A story mean? that is about a specific moment is far better than a general story. I'll give, give you an example. example. Give yeah. an example, right? So um, I could tell you that, like a little story about how I joined IBM, you know, 15 years ago. So I could sort of say, you know, in the late 90s, I... I, I, I remember joining IBM and I had this great job uh, in the first instance where I was sort of running a, a software development team and um, and then I moved on to sort of more of a sales role and then I got into this storytelling work, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah, you just you've fallen <laughs> over and, you, you know, fell, yeah. fell asleep on that yeah. one. So, and, and moments give you pictures. So in that story, there's no imagery. You can't see anything happening, right? Yeah. Whereas I could tell the same story and so say, look, I remember when I started at IBM, I walked into that IBM building and as I was walking up to the elevators, I could see the CEO there. I thought, hey, this is my chance. I'm just going to go up to him, shake his hand, introduce myself. And I did and it was amazing. All of a sudden he turned around and, and it was like he was going to show me around and introduce me to key people. And I remember for that day just how important it was to do that. Well, you know, I went on mm-hmm. to do other things after that. But see, yeah. just by highlighting specific moments, it all of a sudden makes it for a, a much more interesting story. I like it. And I think one of the things that comes to mind as you talk about moments, Sean, is don't underestimate the power of a moment. Because I'll give you an example. I was working with my speaking coaches a few months ago and 
We were developing up um, a chunk of a potential keynote around productivity tools. And one of the productivity tools that I use is a thing called LastPass, which basically means you never need to you never need to remember a password again, right? It pre-populates the password fields in your yeah. any website you go to. So now my speaking coaches always say, in order to get a point across, you've got to tell a story and or crack a joke, right? Doesn't need to be a belly laugh. But to get the point across around last pass, tell a story. And I'm going, what story do I tell? And they found what I think is actually really funny but very mundane, which is how hard it is to remember passwords. You know when you go to a website, think about the last time you went to a website and it's going, what's the, you know, you've, you know you've registered previously but you've got to look for your username and password and you cannot remember whether your password was this or that and you make up funny names around it and you create a whole story around something that's so mundane yeah. as try to remember your username and password. But it actually, I'm sure, you know, that reson- does that resonate with you? I'm sure it resonates. Yeah, yeah, it does. <laughs> I mean, that's what the whole Seinfeld uh, series was about. Yeah, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah. It's very small moments, though. I think yes. that's the key thing. Um, so, small moments. Small moments. I, I think there's a hierarchy of stories, right? So at the very base of the hierarchy is a story is just something that happened, right? But a good story is when you can see it happening, right? And a great story is when you can feel it happening. Nice. And I came across a story just recently that, you know, it's one of those ones that you can feel happening, right? Mm. And uh, it was an inventor. This guy had invented a, uh, a bench saw that when the blade, which is, you know, it's zipping around at hundreds of thousands RPMs, when the blade just even touches some skin, it immediately stops. Whoa. Now, he yeah. had been... T- he, test that out. Test that. Well, that's right. He'd been testing it with um, hot dogs, right? <laughs> and as the hot dog, it was Poor going, dogs. bam, no worries. Yeah, it would stop. Anyway, the day came for him to test it out on his own finger. Died. So little finger, he's, it's flying around. He's got his little pig. He's worked out which finger he can, you know, most uh, sort of uh, sacrifice <laughs> and pushes it in, closes his eyes, and <sighs> the thing stops. He hasn't got a scratch on his finger. What a he moment. knew that's when he had the the, the invention that he, he he was going to make a million out of. So, um, but when I heard that, I went, uh, you know, I could feel the you know the hairs sort of uh, come up off the off my arms, and I'm thinking, I got to remember that story. That's a good little story. Now that that is a great story, uh, albeit that fellow has got some pretty good material to work with. Yeah, know, yeah. What yeah, a, yeah. What about the plumber? or the real estate agent who hasn't got the story about almost losing his, his or her finger? Well, so, you know, I was in at the physiotherapist just recently. You know, I'd done something on the back. And, and he, you know, he's always asking me what I'm doing and telling me. Got to move more, Sean. Got to move more, mate. Yeah. And um, <laughs> so, essentially, this guy, uh, I, could, I said to him, the, to, the, to the physio, you know, you know, you could be telling stories about, your patients um, and the good things that they've done in the past that really made a difference to the, their, their progress, mm. right? Go and find those tiny stories. Tell me that so that I feel motivated about doing the exercises that you're suggesting to me. So these don't have to be really big stories at all. Yeah, yeah, okay. So the physio could go, you're, you're probably like me, you go, oh, here we go, he's going to give me 10 exercises to go home with. Yeah. The physio could quite easily go, I know what you're thinking. You think I'm going to give you 10 exercises to go home with? I'm only going to give you nine. And let me tell you, I had a bloke in the other day who I had very similar to you and then you kind of tell the story about that That's person. And, exactly. Yeah, gotcha. So, and I think plumbers and, and uh, you know, everyone who's out there sort of doing those types of work, they've got those stories. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. You mentioned, just to finish up, Sean, fascinating conversation, by the way, and one that um, needs to be told. Sort of a pun there. You see what I did there? Yeah, yeah very good. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Um, <laughs> you said that in in the workplace, in the business situations, 30% of the time, I think you said 30%, yeah. there is opportunities to tell stories. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. For the sake of our listeners, who, as I said to you earlier before we hit record, they are plumbers and real estate agents and all, they're small business owners. What are they, I don't know, top three, top five opportunities to tell stories in your mind that you that you know will help help get a sale? Yeah. Well, I think the first one is when you're meeting people from the first time, 
you know, the whole building rapport. Then, then about um, essentially the, the second type of story would be around um, uh, using that clarity structure I, I shared with you to, to show, you know, why would they choose your service or your product. Mm-hmm. Then the third one would be a story to make sure they don't do the wrong thing. You know, whatever you do, don't go down that path because that could be a disaster. Rather than just saying that, you would tell a story of someone who did go down that path and the pain that they suffered. Mm-hmm. Um, and and I guess the the last story would be, it's just your success stories. You know, you got to have a bunch of your successes in your back pocket so you can. Now you don't want to tell them, you know, over and over in a sense of here's here's a list of four successes. Yeah, yeah. You got to again, it comes back to the conversation, right? You've got to find where they just pop out naturally. And um, and I think once you do that, especially if you're combining it with sort of teaching your your customer a lesson of some sort, mm. that's when the best time to sort of tell a story. Love it. Although if you're in America, you could just rattle off those successes one after the other. I mean, I think what you said there was probably more of a an Australian thing where, you, you know. So? Well, yeah, I think I, you might be right. Yeah. Might be right. We're not so big on uh, blowing our own trumpet unless we're <laughs> asked to, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now, you and I have something in common, Sean. Our book came out last week. Yes. Quite exciting. Exciting, hey? Well, at least we took delivery. Mine did come out. I took delivery from the printer and have been selling it. You have taken delivery and uh, you are still in pre-sale mode, but by the time this goes out, it'll be well and truly for sale. Uh, what's it called and where can people Putting, get it? So it's called Putting Stories to Work, Mastery nice. Business Storytelling. And it's available from our website, which is anecdote.com. Love the name of your business. D- d- yeah, d- yeah d- we were lucky to get that. Yeah. you were, Well, mind you, I think you've been in business since 2004, haven't you? That's it, yeah. So, well, you know, one we name. for the big uh, story storytelling deluge. Well, that's right, and one name, domain names. Although, is it is it anecdote.com or .au? Dot .com. Nice. That'd be worth a bit. Yeah, it might be actually. Well, so. You should check that out. I'm not that you plan to sell it, but one word dictionary domain names are, are valuable. I'm, I'm going to guess it's it's worth tens of thousands of dollars. Yeah, yeah, if, if not probably more. is probably is, which is fantastic. <laughs> But like you say, we're not going to sell it. So it's <laughs> that's an right. asset that we can't realise. That, yeah, that's not... <laughs> it's academic. But um, I've got to ask because I, I am fascinated by business names. I love naming things. Was that um, was that an easy name to come up with? Can you remember back? What was that? Twelve years ago? Was, was yeah, it... yeah. Well, so I had some criteria for the name, and and I actually was. I remember reading something Seth Godin had written. Yeah. And he sort of said, it's good to have names which are at the beginning of the alphabet at the end of the alphabet. So you end up at the beginning and ends of lists. Yeah, right. Uh, and so I went, yeah, anecdote fit that. And I I like the idea of just a a one-word name, you know, that mm. that I could come up with a logo that was just the word. Mm-hmm. And so that's that's the other thing I was thinking. And, of course, it was story-based. And the other thing is our, our story work is very focused on small stories, so we're not into big, crafted, Hollywood-style, yeah, right. you know, big stories. So you're, anecdotes, you're into anecdotes. We're into anecdotes, exactly. Love it. Hey, Sean, love chatting to you, mate. Can people find you on Twitter? Yeah, just uh, Sean Callahan, one word, Jeez, S-H-A-W-N. You are just lucking it out. You get one word domain names. You get your name as your Twitter handle. Honestly, yeah. mate. What are we're, the Tats Lotto numbers this week? Early adopters, early adopters. <laughs> early adopters. Good <laughs> on you, Sean. Thanks for, uh, thanks for telling your story, mate. Uh, it was a pleasure. Well, there you go, team. We all lived happily ever after, as, in a good, as any good story should, you know, have that kind of ending. Anecdotes, Sean Callahan, that was. Be sure to hit him up on Twitter. Now, my to- I've got top five attention grabbers from that little chat. Thanks to the good guys at Audible who've got 180,000 audiobooks, speaking of stories, ready for immediate download. You can grab a free one at audibletrial.com forward slash SBBM. And NetRegistry are also making these top five attention grabbers possible. Head over to netregistry.com.au forward slash Timbo for some exclusive listener offers to get your marketing sorted online. Attention grabber number one. A great story is when you can feel something happening. I like that quote from Sean. He had a few good quotes. Uh, I'm going to take that one step further and suggest that great marketing is when you can feel something happening. Uh, 
So how are you injecting emotion into your marketing? I would suggest that is a very good question to ask and I would start doing it. If you want to learn how to do it, seriously team, buy The Boomerang Effect, my new book over at smallbusinessbigmarketing.com because if you embrace The Boomerang Effect, you will by default inject emotion into your marketing. Attention grabber number two, as of right now, look for opportunities to tell prospects stories. These may come in the questions they ask you, you know, like, how long have you guys been in business? Well, respond with a story. Start thinking about all the stories you can tell in your business. Attention grabber number three, take up that challenge Sean and I spoke of. Come up with a story for three aspects of your business, then share them with a friend and get their feedback and offer them the same opportunity if they're a business owner as well. I like kind of making fun. This is where marketing becomes a hobby, team. Hey, you with me? Attention grabber number four, start your stories with a time marker. You know, like a while back, just the other day, that type of thing. And number five, find poignant moments to tell stories about. They don't need to be amazing. They just need to be interesting. Lose the need to be amazing in your marketing for the moment, right? Be interesting, be engaging. You will win. Promise. There was a couple of other quotes Sean had. A great stories are a series of happenings. I like that. A story is the shortest distance between two people. Isn't that lovely? And how's this for a fact? Storytelling is seven times more memorable than fact-telling. Woo! There you go. Actually, there was more than five attention grabbers, weren't there? That's okay. That means there was lots of gold dripping from the ceiling. What did you catch? What was your little bit of, what was your nugget? I'd love to know. Head over to smallbusinessbigmarketing.com forward slash 304 and tell me. Bertrand Russell once said, the time you enjoy wasting is not wasted time. I do love that quote, hey? You get a bit guilty about time wasting every now and then, but if you enjoy it, (laughs) just love it. Hey, uh, listen to question time and feedback. You know how you can do this, team? You head over to iTunes, leave me a listener review and include a marketing question in your website, and I'll answer it, hey? I'll give you some loving, and I'll give you some marketing gold as well. This one comes from Paul B. He says, Timbo, I've been loving your podcast since I found it a few months ago, and working my way back through the episodes. Good on you, Paul. You're the one. (laughs) Each episode opens my eyes to something I haven't thought of for helping to market my small business. That's what we do around here. Highlights have been David Warren talking about outsourcing. Yeah, that was a great episode. One of my most popular last year for sure. And uh, some news on David uh, coming up very, very shortly. And Paul also enjoyed me talking to Nathan Chan from Founder Magazine about Instagram. Yeah, Nathan's a great bloke. I share office space with him now, believe it or not. Uh, In one episode, you mentioned the book Delivering Happiness, which I've since read and really enjoyed. Yeah, that that is a ripper, ripper book about customer service and experience. Must read, I would suggest. I'll put a a link in the show notes to it. Paul goes on to say, do you have any other books you can suggest? I've heard the boomerang effect is pretty good. Yeah, well, it is, uh, Paul. I hope you say that seriously. Uh, It's very good. Uh, head over to smallbusinessbigmarketing.com to buy that one. Uh, so I'll probably check that out. Speaking of which, I'm kind of opposite to you and only read books on Kindle. Oh, no, I've got to, I've got to hold the book. Are you going to release your book on uh, as an e-book? No, no, not yet. No, it's just hard copy, you know, like that. Keep up the great work. Now, Paul, great questions. Uh, here's five books that I suggest you read. Number one. Now, a friend of mine, Amanda Stevens, has just put out a wonderful book. It's called Turning Customers into Advocates, and that's exactly what it's about. It's about offering great customer experience. 
Uh, head over to amandastevens.com.au to grab a copy of that. It's an absolute ripper. My friend David Warren just read it on the plane flying back to the Philippines, Philippines and uh, rated it very highly. Uh, number two, Don Miguel Sanchez, The Four Agreements. It's not a business book, but it's a book about how to be a good person. And it's just it's shaped... I would say, I'd go as far as to say it shaped my outlook on life, uh, which is a big call, isn't it? But it absolutely applies to being a business owner. Uh, a number three number three book, uh, Daniel Flynn, Chapter One. Interviewed Daniel recently. It's all about thinking differently in business. And we've got to do that, team. We've got to do that more. Daniel challenges convention and he walks his talk. That's a great book. I would suggest getting that. Uh, Jay Bear. Another past guest, he wrote a book called Utility, which I think is the seminal book on on content marketing and has had a huge influence on my outlook on marketing as well. Um, And the fifth one, Paul, L. Reese and Jack Trout's book called Positioning. Now, this is an old one, but it's as true today as when it was published 20 years ago or more, I think. Uh, It's classic. It's absolutely classic. It lays out the basics of finding where your business fits in the larger picture of what your prospects want and what other companies are doing. So it helps you position your book in the competitive landscape. Some of the case studies, they're a little bit old, eh? aging like myself, but it does remain a a seminal, I've used that word twice in the last minute, a seminal uh, marketing text, I would suggest. Best quote in it, positioning is not what you do to a product. Positioning is what you do to the mind of your prospect. eh? Woo, it's heavy. So there you go, five books, plus the boomerang effect. That's six. That'll keep you going for a while, Paul. Paul, thank you for your five-star feedback, by the way, in iTunes. Listeners, go and do that, and I'll mention you on the show. Okay, team, I think that almost brings us to the end of episode 304, eh? 304. That's a lot of hours of marketing gold when we reflect back on that. But let's not do that. Let's look forward. Let's look forward to great marketing because there is plenty of G-O-L-D coming up in the weeks ahead. Next week, we have a chat with Kelly Jamison. She's the founder of an amazingly successful gift-giving business called Edible Blooms. Brilliant idea. And, mate, she is nailing it. She's got 60 staff around Australia. She lives in a beautiful part of Australia and runs a rather large business. Hey, big thanks to editor extraordinaire Daryl Misson for equalising me. I think that's what he does, or one of the things he does. And to Lockie Dolly for the tunes that you hear throughout the show. You can check him out over at LockieDolly.com. Hey, if you want to surround yourself, and you should, by the way, with other motivated business owners, what do they, what do they say? With are some of the five people uh, closest to us, then I would suggest joining the Small Business Big Marketing Forum over at crankmymarketing.com. You know, it's got a 30-day no-questions-asked-money-back guarantee, and you know what? You just might grow your business through learning some smart marketing. Hey, got to love that. I'd love to speak at an upcoming event, if you know of one, timreed.com.au. You can find out about me. You'll see my showreel, my speaker showreel, me in action, basically. Hey, big hugs to Net Registry and Audible for making this show possible. Be sure to use Net Registry if you need to get your online marketing sorted. And Audible, go over there. Or, uh, two links, actually, I'll give you. Tripping over myself there, getting ahead of myself. I've got a coffee waiting. Uh, netregistry.com.au forward slash Timbo is where you'll find some wonderful listener packages. And audibletrial.com forward slash SBBM is where you will find a free audio book ready for you to download. Choose from 180,000 titles. That's nice. Until next week, team, I am Timbo Reed. Thank you for listening to the Small Business Big Marketing Show. May your marketing be the best marketing. Bye for now. Bye.